at number 17, they've got three terms, which means we're going to do like the basic bottoms up trial and error type factor and trying to get two parentheses. So I always do it by multiplying the front to the back, so that's negative 30. It come up with two numbers then that will multiply to be negative 30 and add to be positive 30. 10 and 3. No, that won't work. So, so it has to be negative 30. You have to have like 10 minus 3 or 3 minus 10. And that won't get you 13. So that's not it. Try another one. How about 15 and 2? 15 times 2 is 30. And if you do 15 minus 2, you get 13. So that's going to be x plus 15, x minus 2. But then since we did that multiplying trick, we now have to divide. We're going to divide by 6. And then if they reduce, reduce them. And then do bottoms up. They both reduce. 15 over 6 reduces to 5 over 2 and 1 over 3. And then you do bottoms up. So 2x plus 5, 3x minus 1. For b, it's the same idea. You're going to multiply the 6 times the negative 5, so <clears throat> that's negative 30 again. Obviously, it's not 15 and 2 this time. We're trying to get a 1. How about 6 times 5? It's got to be a negative 1, so a negative 6 and a positive 5. Then, since we did the multiply trick, now you divide. Reduce if you can. <clears throat> that just goes to 1. This would be 6x plus 5. Always check for a GCF first. Um, no, doesn't have one. <clears throat> so then you can multiply. 16 times 9 is 144. So it's got to multiply to be negative 144, add to be 18. Um, some possibilities would be four and thirty-six. Six and twenty-four. Eight and eighteen, nine and sixteen, twelve and twelve, of course. So all of these things multiply to be one forty four. One of them would be negative to get a negative one forty four. And we're trying to add to get eighteen. So that'd be twenty four minus six. Since we did the multiply trick, now we have to divide. So you divide by 16, reduce, and bottoms up. So you reduce that uh, 3 over 8. Three over 2. Bottoms up. So 8x minus 3 and 2x Plus three. <clears throat> so multiply again. Sixteen times negative nine is negative one forty-four. <clears throat> have to get negative one forty-three. So that will be one minus one forty-four.
And then since we did the multiply trick, you do the division now. Bottoms up if it doesn't reduce. There it is. Here we've got three more terms, three terms again. So that's going to be the same type of factoring. There's no leading coefficient, so that's kind of easy. Don't have to do any multiplying or bottoms up. Since it's got a t to the fourth and a t squared, though, that just means that each parenthesis is going to get t squared. Because t squared times t squared will be t to the fourth. And then the numbers are going to be multiplied to be 1, add to be 2. So that's plus 1, plus 1. Really similar for B. T squared, T squared again. This time they have to multiply to be positive 1, add to be negative 2. So that's going to be a negative 1 and a negative 1. But t squared minus 1, you can factor that. And then t squared minus 1, you can factor that. So that's actually t plus 1, t minus 1. You have to factor it all the way down. Because those are difference of squares. And you can go a little bit further because t plus 1, you can combine those are the same thing. So you can say that's t plus 1 squared. And then t minus 1, you can combine those and say t minus 1 squared. <clears throat> and then for c... It would be a t squared in front of each of them if we can come up with the numbers. There's no numbers that multiply to be negative 1 that add to be negative 2. You can only get a negative 1 by doing positive 1 times negative 1, and that will always add to be 0. So, prime. More of the same type of factoring. Uh, numbers that multiply by 20 and add to be negative 9. Since it's a t to the 4th and a t squared, they each get t squared. And the numbers that multiply by 20 and add to be negative 9, that's 5 times 4. That'd be a negative 5 and a negative 4. And then since that's a t squared, you might be able to factor it more if it's a difference of squares. So we've got the minus sign, but 5 is not a perfect square, so we can't go any further with that. 4 is t squared minus 4 is going to factor to be t plus 2, t minus 2. For B, we're looking for numbers that multiply by 20, add to be 19, so that's going to be 20 and 1. It's going to be a negative 19, so the 20 is, oh, that's not going to work, because that would multiply by negative 20. Uh, there's no other way to do it, so it's prime. Which means C is what I started to write down there, because that multiplies to be a negative 20. Let's see if they factor any further. T squared minus 20. 20 is not a perfect square, so no, it doesn't. 
2 squared and 1, those are perfect squares, but it's got a plus, so no, they don't factor further either. Just like every problem, you start by looking for a GCF. It has one. They all have an X in common, so take it out. Then you can factor the rest of it. So multiply the five times or the four times the twenty-five to get a hundred. Two numbers that multiply being negative 100 and add to be negative 20. It's not 10 and 10 because it has to be a negative 100, so that won't work. Mm, 25 and 4 doesn't work. Doesn't factor anymore. This one you get positive 100, which means you can do 10 and 10. Multiply, you have to divide, so divide by four. Reduce. So that's uh, 10 over 4, that'd be 5 over 2. Then you do bottoms up. So 2x minus 5. And since you would get the same thing twice, just write it as a squared. It's a little bit easier. Same thing. Look for GCF first. Take it out. You get x squared plus x plus 1. Then you can check to see if anything multiplies to be 1 and adds to be 1. It doesn't, you're done. Take out the X again. This time we're multiplying to be 1, add to be 2, so that's X plus 1, X plus 1. You could write it as x plus 1 squared. Be a little bit better. Now they're starting to look a little bit crazy. <clears throat> so the main reason that these look different is it's got more terms. It's got four terms. One, two, three, four. So four terms, you're going to check factor by grouping. So that first set, they both have a B. So take out the B, and you're left with A minus C. Second group, they both have an A, so you're going to take out a positive A, and you'd be left with A Minus C. It's good. Grouping works when the parentheses are the same. So the parentheses are the same, so that's one of our factors, A minus C. And then the other one would be B plus A. If you wanted to flip that order and say A plus B, that's okay. B 
is actually another factor by group, and there's four terms here. We've got here's a term, here's a term, those parentheses are a term, and then all of that is another term. So four terms. You group the first two together and the last two together, and then look to see what they have in common. So that first set, they have an X. They both have an X in common, so take it out. If you factor out the X from this first term, you get U plus V. And then if you factor out the X here, you just have minus Y. Next, we got the u plus v squared and the u plus v y. So they both have u plus v in parentheses. So that's what we're going to take out. And if you take that out, we're left with another u plus v. Minus the u plus v is gone. We're just left with the y. Which is good, again, the parentheses are the exact same, u plus v minus y. So that's one of our two factors here. The other factor is the front stuff, the x plus u plus v. And then since there's parentheses and parentheses, you're going to want to simplify that. There's nothing to distribute. We don't have to do anything there. So it's just u plus v minus y. And then x plus u plus v. So for these, you're looking for a common factor again. They both have the same parentheses. X plus five. And since this one's to the third power, that's to the second power, we can actually take out two of them. Once that's factored out, the three is still there. Another X plus five is there. The 2 is still there. We took out the x plus 5 squared, though, so that's it. And we have parentheses inside parentheses, so we got to do something with that. So you're going to have to distribute. And then combine like terms. We combine the 15 plus 2, you get 17, and you're done. B is really similar. Uh, you can still take out the x plus 5 squared. But then you'd be left with A, x plus 5, plus B, and that's the same step. You have to distribute and combine like terms if you have any. So distribute the A. And then plus B. This time there's no like terms though, so that's it. So for these, count the number of terms. One, two, three, 
four terms. That means we're going to take grouping. So the first set has an X that we can factor out and a Z that we can factor out. You take out XZ, we still have another X and another Z. You take out the XZ, we still have a T. And then the second set, they both have a Y, that's it, so we'll take that out. You'd be left with XZ plus the T. Which is good, we got the same parentheses, that means grouping worked. So X, Z plus T. And then the other factor would be X, Z plus Y. Six also has four terms, so you're going to do the same thing, grouping. They both have a T squared, so we'll take out the T squared. And you're left with A squared plus B squared. In the second set, they both have a minus, so we'll take out the negative. And they both have a C. And then we'd have a B squared plus A squared. It's maybe a little bit tricky because they're out of order. A squared plus B squared and B squared plus A squared. But obviously that's the same thing. So it works. A squared plus B squared is one of our factors. And then the front, T squared minus C, that's the other one. With every problem, make sure before you box it, before you finish it up, that you make sure they don't factor further. A squared plus B squared, that doesn't factor because it's a plus instead of a minus. And then T squared minus C, that doesn't factor because C is not a squared. It's not a perfect square. So 27, we've got one, two, three terms with a lot of variables. It's three terms. We know that's going to be the basic type of factoring where we've got to look at the numbers and see what multiplies and adds. We need two numbers that multiply to be positive 4 and add to be a negative 4. So multiply before, that's either 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. If you add to be a negative 4, it's got to be a negative 2 and negative two. Not the numbers. Now it's the variable pieces that are going to be a little tricky. We have an a to the fourth in the front. We got to split that between the two parentheses. So that means a squared a squared in the front because it was in the front. And then the b to the fourth c to the fourth, we have to split that in the box. So when you split it, that's going to be a B squared in both of the backs and a C squared. If you quick did a little foiling to check it out, you know that when you multiply A squared times A squared, you get A to the fourth. Negative 2B squared C squared times negative 2B squared C squared. That checks out. And then your middle term, you would get when you do the outside and the inside, that would be 
a squared times negative 2 b squared c squared. So you get the a squared b squared c squared. We know the numbers work. So. <clears throat> You do need to check because that's a perfect square in the front. B squared, C squared, that's a perfect square. The only thing that messes this up so it cannot be factored further is the 2. If that was like a 9 or a 4 or a 16, a perfect square, then you'd be able to factor further. Twenty-eight, we got four terms. I guess we could try grouping. So usually for grouping, what you do is you look for common factor. There's no common factor between a squared and b squared. There's no common factor between, well, there's the number 16, I guess. There's no common factor between a squared and b squared. But it does factor. It's not a common factor, but it does factor. So that will be a plus b times a minus b. It does factor. It's not a common factor. Maybe that can work. Maybe it won't. Then the other part, uh, we can factor out the 16. You have the A left over and you have a 4. Hmm. The parentheses aren't the same, though. Neither of these parentheses match that because it's a 4 instead of a B. So that's it. You really can't factor this whole thing. I guess you could go to here. Or you could have said it was prime or whatever. This is not any more simplified than the original question. I can 27. You could... Combine that because it's the exact same thing. You just say the whole thing squared. That would work. And 28, you could say prime, or if you did some work, that would be okay too. But it's not more simplified, so it's not worth doing. Twenty-nine and thirty. We've talked about problems like these already. Perfect square and a perfect square, but it's got a plus sign. Prime. A perfect square and a perfect square, but it's a plus. So it's prime. Thirty-one. This is a cube. That's a cube plus 64, which is 4 cubed. So that's a sum of cubes. So sum of cubes, you use the pattern, big parenthesis, little parenthesis. X goes in the front, and the 4 in the back. And then it's squared, so X squared. And then you multiply them together, so 4x, and then squared, 4 squared is 16. And then you fill in your signs using soap. Same, opposite, always positive. So the sign here is plus, so it's the same sign, plus, the opposite sign. Minus, and always positive. Twenty seven is a perfect cube. That's three cubed. Cubed. And then a minus b to the third, that's obviously a cube. So this is a difference of cubes. So you've got your smaller parenthesis and your bigger parenthesis. 
So inside we get a three first, and then the A minus B. And then you first square, so three squared is nine. Then you multiply them together. And then you square, A minus B squared. And then get the signs using silver. Same, opposite, always positive. We've got a lot of parentheses inside parentheses, so we could try to simplify. So that'd be three minus a plus b. This would be nine plus three a minus three b. I don't think this is going to simplify any. You could even foil this out, see if there's like terms you can combine. There really won't be them. So let's just leave it alone. I wouldn't say either one of these is more simplified. Take a fix of one of them. Maybe this one because uh, you got rid of at least one parenthesis. Combine it, kind of. This is probably the best simplified answer. <clears throat> Here we've got more perfect cubes. So it's the sum of cubes and difference of cubes. So that's first x plus y minus y. And then you get a square, multiply squared. Multiply them together. And then y squared at the back. Then fill in your signs. Same sign, so negative. Opposite sign, always positive. And then all these parentheses inside parentheses, we can simplify a little bit. X plus Y minus Y is actually just X. I'll leave that x plus y squared. We can distribute here. Might want to foil that out. Uh, x times y. That's a y squared. And then another y squared. If we foil this out, we're going to get some of those same types of terms. We're going to get x squareds, we're going to get y squareds, we're going to get xy's, so we can combine. You foil that out, you get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, and then copy down the rest of it. Then combine all your like terms, and that'll be simplified. That's our only x squared. We got a 2xy and an xy, so that's 3xy. And then we've got 3y squared.
So uh, these ones have four terms, so let's do grouping. There's nothing in common to factor out. But x cubed minus y cubed does factor. Even if it's not a common factor, it does factor because there's a difference cubes. So you do the x and the y. And then it's squared, multiplied together, squared, same sign, opposite sign, always positive. That's how that first part factors. And then we have this plus x minus y, which nothing factors from that. You could think of it as having like a one out front, though. Then they each have this x minus y. So that's a common factor. And then you write everything else as the other factor. So x squared plus xy plus y squared plus 1. It is factored. You could argue if it's more simplified, but it's definitely factored. In. So for 37, p to the 4th minus 1, those are perfect squares. p to the 4th is p squared, squared, and 1 is 1 squared. So you can split that up as a difference of squares because it's a difference of squares. So your first parenthesis gets p squared. And then the back gets a 1. One time positive, one time negative. But p squared is still a perfect square. 1 is still a perfect square. You can't do anything if it has a plus in the middle, but if it has a minus, you can factor 1. So you do it. p plus 1, p minus 1. You actually get three factors from it. For B, it's very similar. You split it up. You get P to the fourth plus one and P to the fourth minus one. You cannot split it up any further. You can't factor it if it's a plus, but if it's a minus, you can. So that would be P squared plus 1, P squared minus 1. Since it has a plus, you can't split that one up more, but the minus with the perfect squares, you can. You end up getting a whole bunch of factors. Just like that. Thirty eight A has got a plus sign in between, so it's prime. Because they're squares and not cubes. Thirty eight B, you can factor that. P squared plus two. 
3 squared minus 2. Plus sign we know we can't factor, but also the 2 is not a perfect square, so we're not going to factor that either. 